welcome to this edition of the Prime Time. And if you're watching us from Cameroon or around the globe, I am Nadine Mebune for presentation. Our latest headlines. Coming up, 43 more bodies of soldiers killed in an ambush in Ethiopia recently have been found. The death toll has increased to 51 people. Keep it there for the details of that story. Also ahead, today is the International Mother Language Day. The 2023 edition will explore the theme, multilingual education, a necessity to transform education. And on this edition of the Primetime, Dash News seeks to know the importance of the mother language to children. Finally, Robert Mugabe Jr. has been set free from detention following his arrest over the weekend. The 31-year-old son of Zimbabwe's former president was accused of damaging a friend's vehicle and property worth 12,000 US dollars during a party. Those were top stories. Development in just a moment. Welcome back. Burkina Faso's Army Communication and Public Relations Department have announced that 43 more bodies of soldiers killed in an ambush in Burkina Faso recently have been found. This brings the death toll increase to 51 people. The announcement was made on Monday, second provisional toll within the same week. Audrey Zaksa has the details of that story. The death toll of the ambush attack in Burkina Faso Sahel region last Friday keeps increasing. 51 birdies have been found so far and several Burkina Bay soldiers are still missing, according to the army, in a statement on Monday. These fatalities add to an earlier toll of eight soldiers given by the army on the same Monday morning. As of now, no one has been directly blamed for the attack, though the army reported a VART 116 assailants died during the counterattack. This figure is in addition to the 60 or so terrorists neutralized since the beginning of the response. The said attack occurred two days before France officially marked the end of its military operations in the West African nation, where in 2015, some 400 French special forces had been sent to help fight an insurgency that spread from neighboring Mali. Estimates by NGOs suggest VART the violence has led to more than 10,000 deaths and displaced some 2 million people. Anger within the military at failures to stem the bloodshed led to two coups last year. In more news, according to a report by the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission, at least 50 people have been killed in Ethiopia's Oromia region this month in an attack by banned rebel groups. In the following report, we hear that the the the, the it cites the families of the victims, witnesses, and government bodies blame the attack on the Oromia Liberation Army. The details. Oromia is home to Ethiopia's largest ethnic group and has experienced insecurity for many years, rooted in grievances about political marginalization and neglect by the central government. According to a report by the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission, at least 50 people have been killed in Ethiopia's Oromia region this month in an attack by a banned rebel group. According to the report, on February 2nd, the killings mainly targeted internally displaced persons from the Amhara ethnic group in the town of Arno. Arno is located about 380 kilometers west of the capital city, Addis Abeba. The report, which cites families of the victims, Witnesses and government bodies blamed the attack on the Oromo Liberation Army. The Amhara, whose region borders Oromia, are Ethiopia's second largest ethnic group. There has been serious violence perpetrated by Oromo and Amhara militants in recent years, often targeting civilians. At the moment, the Oromo Liberation Army has not responded to the accusations, neither has Ethiopian government spokesman. The violence in Oromia is separate from the two-year conflict between the federal government and forces in the northern Tigray region, which ended in November following a peace agreement between the government and the Tigrayan forces. 
over to Mali now. The launch of activities of a new Malian opposition platform critical of the transitional authorities have been disrupted by thugs in Bamako. However, the new platform has called for the abandonment of the project to organize a constitutional referendum and the rapid organization of elections for a return to civilian rule. For that story, here's Baseni Banene Tombo. The ceremony of several political parties and associations gathered at the Maison de la Presse in Mali to launch a new political platform that is critical of the transitional authorities was marked by sudden interruption from an unidentified young group, an attack which has raised suspicion on Malian authorities. Despite a sudden intervention, which was later handled, the new Malian opposition platform is demanding for the abandonment of the plan to organize a constitutional referendum and the quick organization of elections for a return to civilian rule. Reiterating that it is sad to see that democratic space is oppressed today in Mali, a situation which needs to change. Malian authorities have set several dates to hold elections and return to civilian rule after the last military coup, which has greatly angered not only the local population, but the international bodies like ECOWAS and the African Union who are closely monitoring the affairs. Let's now move to Zimbabwe, where Robert, Robert Mugabe Jr. has been freed after spending one day in detention. The eldest son of Zimbabwe's former president was arrested after a party fight, which led to the destruction of property. But Hilda Dashako has the details of that story. He's once more in the spotlight, and for the wrong reason again. Ruben Mugabe Jr., the eldest son of former Zimbabwean president, has spent a night in detention accused of destroying luxury cars and other properties worth about 11,000 U.S. dollars at a party. He was taken by the police after his friend filed a lawsuit. Reports say he spent the night in detention and was taken to court, where the judge asked the two parties to settle the issue out of court. There was more of a misunderstanding between friends, and um, the case has been cleared. Um, he's going back home. There, is, there are no formal charges that were laid. Um, so I think uh, it was more of a misunderstanding between friends. It's, it wasn't something major. Okay, uh, so yeah. we did not appear in court? Yes, 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 yes. We okay. did not appear in court, yes. So the charges have been dropped? Yes. No, we can't say they were dropped. Uh, what we have done is um, we thought it wise, even the state thought it wise, that uh, the matter be handled elsewhere. Court was not the best place. Uh, it was two friends who, who couldn't see eye to eye on a particular issue. And then it was, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, blown out of proportion. But they're getting along, they're friends. Uh, it's uh, what. No charges have been dropped by his friend. Ruben Mugabe Jr. is known for his notorious nightlife, which often results to fight and other negative acts. His extravagant lifestyle has also been subject of criticism in the country, battling economic challenges for decades. The 31-year-old has made his first steps in politics by participating in the ruling ZANU-PF rally last year. Well, Cameroon today joins the international community to celebrate the Day of the Mother Tongue. And now Audrey Zatsa in the report that follows seeks to find out the importance of the mother language to children. The details. Midi Peyam, Cameroon. The transmission of the mother tongue for a multilingual Cameroon remains a cause for concern. Some attribute this to modernization due to Cameroon's inheritance of the French and English languages. Mother tongue today is losing its value at the profit of English and French. It's due to modernization. The context in which we live doesn't permit anymore. The context in which we live permit Fufulde, Yemba, Sawa, some parents have, however, succeeded to instill the love of local languages in their kids. I transmit my local language to my kids, otherwise that will mean I'm an ignorant. I wouldn't love to find myself in a situation where I speak in my vernacular and my child doesn't understand. It will annoy me. This denizen says he was taught by his parents. Yes, I speak my vernacular. I learned it when I was small from my mom and dad. 
Cameroon is one of the countries classified by UNESCO as a distinctive cultural density on the linguistic map of the world as it counts at least 260 local languages. The government, through its education programs, help in promoting the teaching and learning of vernacular. Days like Mother Tongue, observed every February 21, equally come to remind every individual of their cultural identity. Well, that was it for this edition of the Prime Time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for spending your time with us and uh, continue to keep it here on Dash News as we are a 24-7 news channel that gives you first-hand news. Dash News is the voice of Africa.